This is the Power of Thing America podcast, and today we're talking with the undefeated M4 63 kilo world champion, best lifter, and owner of all four world records in her class, Shelly Stetner, who is just three weeks out from defending her title at PA Nats. Shelly did her first competition at age 68, and she's put 40 kilos on her total in just three years since. But don't let her kindness fool you. She is extremely competitive and wants all the smoke with her competitors, even to the point of putting the M3s on notice that she wants to out-total them as an M4. This is a spicy one. But before we start, don't forget that we have three big events coming up in the next five weeks with Bench World starting May 20 in South Africa, Sub Junior, Junior Masters, and Equip National starting June 2nd in Arizona, and Classic Open World starting in June 11th in Malta. They will all be streamed live, and we'll post the links on our Instagram story at powerlifting underscore America, so make sure you're following us there. Thank you to SBD and Aleko for the continued partnership with Powerlifting America. If you're looking to compete in drug tested powerlifting, whether you're just starting out or you want to compete with the best in the world, make sure you go to powerlifting-america.com and become a member. Now, let's get to the interview with the Queen of the M4s, Shelly Stetner. What is up? I've got the M4 63 kilo undefeated world champion and best lifter, Shelly Stetner. How's it going, Shelly? That's good. Thank and you. also, oh yeah. And also with me, we've got a uh, co-host, Julia Williams, 63 kilo open lifter. So we got two of the strongest 63 kilos in the world here. How's it going, Julia? <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So Shelly, how's everything going with you? Um, did you know you're undefeated in powerlifting? <laughs> well, the the uh, the the pool of competition for me is is small. <laughs> so unfortunately, but but hopefully, hopefully, with me being out there, that will change. Uh, certainly, in years in years coming up, it's going to change, and I'll, totally. I'll probably be bumped off of this, uh, this perch, uh, you know, as, as the, you know, as people get older. Yeah. Well, definitely you're very modest. Um, but you are the best M4 63 kilo in the world and you're the best lifter in the, all of the world championships, um, you know, in the M4 division. So, you know, hold on to that title and brag about it while you can uh, for sure. Um, I also, I was noticing, I looked up your, uh, your records on good lift and you're actually the world record holder for all three disciplines and the total. So just a complete dominant force in, uh, M fours in the 63 kilo weight class. Yeah. It's, 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 it's surprising. I'm probably the most surprised <laughs> of, of <laughs> anybody. <laughs> so, yeah. So, um, a couple of things about uh, recent developments in powerlifting. Um, did you watch Sheffield? Absolutely. Well, most of it. Yeah. Most of it. I did like the yeah. women for sure, you yeah. know, and the, the 63 kilogram and as much of the others as I could. Yeah. Yeah. So who, who specifically were you, you know, really uh, looking to watch at Sheffield? Oh gosh. Um, Evie. Oh my goodness. You she weren't. Was, ex- <laughs> <laughs> she was incredible. Yeah. Uh, you know, I just, um, you know, that, that, that just can't be topped. Yeah. Um, it's been the talk of powerlifting for sure. Um, since Sheffield, um, you have any, did she give you any ideas about cutting? Or oh, anything no. Like that? oh, absolutely. No, no, I no, wouldn't. no. At my age, I can't <laughs> matter of fact, I'm even bulked up now, two pounds. <laughs> awesome. So. Awesome. Yeah. I noticed earlier before we started recording, your arms are looking jacked. So yeah, um, you definitely look like you're ready, ready to go, you know, into season. Hopefully it's been a, it's been a rough one. It's, uh, um, <clears throat> since worlds it's, it's been difficult. I've encountered mm-hmm. some obstacles and, you know, the rules change and, you know, I had to, uh, I had to redo my bench. Um, you know, my bench set up, uh, at a time when I also developed a bicep tendonitis, it was, it was rough, <laughs> it really was. So for sure, for sure. I've been following your prep and, um, it's been, it's been tough, but it seems like, how are you feeling now? Are you, are you ready to go? Are you hundred percent? I am good now. I, and I, I'm not real sure how it happened other than I just, um, made myself keep moving and in in some respects, the um, bench rule change uh, and the bicep tendonitis turned out to be kind of a a good thing for me. 
because it forced me to change my my whole bench setup uh, in a way that I think is much better for me now. Um, wow. So yeah, it's uh, it it actually turned into a good thing because I have I have really long arms, mm -hmm. and I was basically close grip benching all this time. Wow. So I, I and then also the setup, I couldn't put my feet on the bench anymore, which seems like a minor thing, but for me it was a big deal. Oh, it was uh, a big deal for everyone, I believe, oh who puts goodness. their feet on the bench. Yeah, yeah, it it was rough. It was rough. I I had I had uh I had times of serious doubt. <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, yeah especially um especially with that, the bicep thing, I had never had anything, you know, around in my shoulder like that before. And, uh, that, that was pretty scary, but, um, I just, you know, I had to find a way to bench that wasn't painful and widening my grip was it. <laughs> wow. And yeah. It also helped with the bench rule. A little uh, bit. Yeah. I, you know, I'm not sure. Uh, I think just, uh, just, you know, playing with it, uh, it was hard. Uh, somehow I figured out a way to, um, to set up cause I do a self lift off all the okay. time. So I had, okay. I, somehow I figured out a way to do it. That doesn't, that didn't hurt <laughs> mm -hmm. and, uh, it seemed to work for me. So, um, so now I think we're good. It's just that I lost time. You know, I lost time mm -hmm. training the bench. So it's kind of been a catch up, um, mm -hmm. a catch up deal for me. So, yeah, I know how that yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, bench takes a hit quick too. If you lose time and you have any kind of interruptions in your frequency or anything like that, um, bench is usually the first one to be affected by stuff like that. So, but, um, uh, you know, Meg Scanlon was kind of saying the same thing that her, when she redid her bench, now she's doing like a sink, um, touch yes, and, and, um, it, you know, she's, she's saying the same thing. I think that eventually she's going to be stronger than she was before, obviously yeah. with her, her, her range of motion before was a lot less. So that's going to take time, but same thing, like retooling and fixing everything and kind of starting from scratch again, seems to be, have been good for a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, powerlifting is just so interesting because it's, um, it's for me, it's just been, um, uh, it's just been kind of a path of figuring out for my body, how to lift these weights and just having to change things up. Um, like I, I had a lot of trouble with the deadlift, <laughs> you know, I went, I went from yeah. conventional yeah, to sumo because, uh, you know, I, I had uh, a glute problem, which turned out to be uh, a proximal hamstring tendinopathy actually is what it was. And uh, I couldn't, you know, it was, it, I just had a sense that if I continued to conventional deadlift, um, I was going to hurt myself in a serious way, <laughs> which I did not want to do. Mm -hmm. So I switched to sumo. Um, the cheater deadlift, which I will never in my life call it that again, because that <laughs> thing is that thing is hard. Yeah, <laughs> sumo is not easy. I oh my goodness. Um, I got uh, Solana Lewis to help me uh, with the form, uh, you know, with the bench. Uh, well, some with the bench, but mostly with the the sumo deadlift, and. Um, you know, then I, I got to a point with the sumo where again, I was having problems with that glute, you know, area. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm now back to conventional, but, uh, I didn't, it's, it's real interesting because I didn't seem to lose strength mm -hmm. when I switched back over. And, uh, my form is very different. Um, and it's, uh, it seems stronger. I don't know how that happened. Mm. but that's okay. Yeah, just, just time lifting, probably, you know, the more time yeah. lifting, you know, you're getting stronger all, all the time. And um, again, it's like that when you have the injuries come about, it sometimes has to focus, refocus on technique and stuff like yeah. this, be, be more aware of things um, for sure. And so, yeah, that's, I mean, 
Um, usually it's the other way though, where people do more conventional and then their sumo gets stronger. So that's pretty interesting that the sumo actually helped build up your conventional. It uh, did. Is everything good now? Are you, are you healthy with the hamstrings and everything now? I am. It's, uh, you know, it gets tired. The, the hamstring will get tired, but, um, it's, uh, it's not, it's not a pain like it was before. So it's not, uh, it's not worrying me. And it's at this point, it's just really kind of fine tuning conventional again, because it's uh, a little bit of a different lift for me. Yeah. So yeah, it's, uh, it's just interesting <clears throat> stuff, really. Um, That's the one of the really cool things about powerlifting is it's like this constant evolution and it's a puzzle and you're trying to figure out little pieces. And just when you think you got one thing fixed, something else happens or an exactly. injury happens or a rule changes. Um, and you got to rethink things. And then usually I think like Mike T talks about that a lot where it's just like athlete focus while training often can be like the most important variable and doesn't really matter. You're doing conventional sumo, whatever it is, having that injury kind of can just get you to be more focused, more in tune with your training, like more aware of what's going on when you're of your techniques and things like that. And then you see gains, you know, come out of that, just yeah. that increased attention. I mean, I knew I had to keep moving. I had to keep lifting. So mm. it forced me to find ways around these issues. And uh, I don't know, somehow it worked, um, you know, so I, I'm excited. I feel strong right now. And, um, you know, I'm all, I'm all ready for raw nats for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So speaking of which, go ahead, Julia. Oh, no, you, you, um, you mentioned Solana, uh, yeah. Lewis. uh, she actually does my nutrition coaching. It's powerlifting oh. in the small world. Um, do you, um, have someone doing that? You mentioned you bulked up a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, to um, I, do. Do you have I do. I have, uh, Nathan Payton who, mm -hmm. um, he's probably most known, <laughs> for coaching uh, strongman people, you know, like uh, Martins, uh, Lysis, uh, you know, the, the world's strongest man people, Brian mm -hmm. Shaw, he's, he is a, he's a nutritionist for those guys. Uh, but also, you know, powerlifters and bodybuilders and all these, these kind of things. So I've, the Nathan, I've been working uh, with him for uh, several years now. And uh, he's amazing. He's just amazing. So, what's his nickname? Uh, the Snack Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I saw that on your Instagram snort story the other day. Yeah. Uh, and I thought that was so hilarious. I wanted to somehow uh, incorporate well, I it. Lifted, I lifted it. I lifted it from one of those strong, strong men. <laughs> he had a t shirt made for Nathan, a snack, the Snack Daddy. So he's, so uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And so, um, he's getting you bulked up like those big strong men I see. So oh, well, that's cool. you know, we're talking two pounds. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably about two pounds heavier now going into, to this meat than I've been before going into meats. So <laughs> will you have, will you have to cut, we have to do like a water oh, cut or anything. Yeah. No. Yeah, I noticed you um you weigh in um you tend oh, yeah. to you're in the 63 kilo weight class, but you tend to weigh in normally around uh 60 kilos as mm -hmm. per open powerlifting. So yeah. You're still well within well within the range. Yeah, I, I don't I'm not too worried about it really. And then and then the closer I get, the more anxious I get, and I kind of naturally scale back on some of what I'm eating too. So stress you stress burn calories I do. Um, I do yeah I'm the same way where like it just leading into a meet somehow I just lose weight and yeah. end up coming in super underweight so um you I mean eventually I mean it's it's cool that you're doing that and that you're putting on mass at your age especially you know that's like always a question of like at what age do you stop putting on mass and muscle mass and stuff like that and you've really proven you can keep doing it well into your 70s and um that's that's just really great. Do you think that you're going to eventually try to fill all the way up to like 64, 65 and then cut, uh, going oh, into a meet? No. Okay. No. Yeah. I, um, uh, those days of, of kind of yo-yo 
uh, dieting and, you know, gaining weight, losing weight way in the past. I don't like right now I'm okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, I feel fine, but, uh, I can't imagine any heavier. I, I would be uncomfortable. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. I would, um, do I you would find go. is, is that something like, do you have to, is it hard for you to gain weight if you want to? Uh, you know, all we did was, um, it, my, <clears throat> my diet is, is like, so, uh, regimented now. I, uh, it's just, it's fuel really all for mm. me. I don't, uh, it's, the whole, my whole approach to food has just totally changed. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to like, when I went through like the injuries, um, we increased my protein from mm -hmm. four ounces per, you know, per serving to five. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that's really all that we did. Everything else is, is basically the same. He, he gives me the diet. I don't, I don't do macros and carbs and all that kind of stuff. Nathan just tells me what to eat, when to eat. And that's, that's cool. That's so, nice. That's, that's how I would need to do it. Yeah. I Actually, can't. if the snack daddy can just send me my meals directly, right. that would probably be the easiest. Yeah. Well, there's, there's, you know, there's companies that do that, Paul. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Uh, my wife won't let me spend any more money on powerlifting. I'll tell oh, you right now. You yeah. If I started being like, oh yeah, I need to get this meal plan in the mail. It'd be, it'd be oh, over. No. Yeah. But uh, yeah, Julia, and feel free to jump in if you have any questions, anything like that. Um, so yeah, we were kind of talking a little bit about, you know, current events, things that are happening. And in general, are you a fan of powerlifting? Do you watch powerlifting meets and stuff and, and pay attention to who's doing what and that kind of thing? I do, you know, I think I do. I, you know, follow mm -hmm. along. I've got certain people that, uh, that I follow and, uh, certainly the 63 kilogram females, I, I follow them, mm -hmm. um, you know, for some reason. And then uh, the masters lifters, absolutely. So, yeah. um, I, and, and every once in a while, as you've probably noticed, I'll, um, I'll, I'll get a, bug in my bonnet and get all upset that, you know, masters lifters are kind of dissed a little bit. And um, yeah, yeah, you know, I just don't understand that. So um, there's certain uh, you guys, uh, uh, certain other groups that are very, you know, promote masters lifters and mm -hmm. which is great. But I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot that, um, that don't, you know, th think yeah. that you know, open lifting is where it's at. And once you're done with that, then you're done with powerlifting, which I don't, I don't agree with, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, it's one of the things that makes our sport so amazing that you can do it for so long and yeah. that we have a diverse, we have, I was just talking about this with Austin last night. Um, it's just, we have such a diversity of people. Um, everything from super young sub juniors to M4s to people from all different walks of life, uh, people who start super young, people who start when they're in their older age, you know, everything in between. And so it's just, it's, that's, what's cool about it. And we all share the same platform and gravity treats us all equally, no matter what. So it's, True. um, it's a really cool sport in that way. Julia, were you going to say something? I think yeah. Oh, along those lines, um, you know, we want to, we want to promote uh, masters lifting and all that. Do you have any, are there any rivalries within the, um, the masters worlds or anything like that, that you want to go into? Yeah. Let's get some sound bites <laughs> of Shelly talking shit to uh, other countries. <laughs> I, I wish, you know, I, there's just, unfortunately, I, I'm like my own competition at this point. I'm, I'm looking for somebody to come out of the woodwork and it could, it could certainly happen. You know, but um, yeah, I I'll admit sometimes I will look at the M threes mm -hmm. and and try to find somebody in the M threes, and it's like okay, well I'm going to beat her, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and not that it happens, but um, you know I can I can get that kind of mindset just because I'm kind of a naturally competitive person, and it it would be really cool to have. Yeah. yeah. 
you're basically the Taylor Atwood of um, you know, <laughs> Masters powerlifting, undefeated, yeah. never lose, best hair, everything, and oh, um, yeah. and you know, I no hope one can he's no, be all no, right. Yeah, what's he's that? Injured. I think he's injured right now too. I hope he's going to be all right. But even injured, he's amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, he's he's seems like he's doing great. He's he's yeah. uh, seems like training's going okay. He's fired yeah. up for sure. But yeah, I mean, you're basically the uh, untouchable. If anyone thinks they're close to getting to Shelly, you're, you don't even know you're not even close. <laughs> you have no idea. Is that the Taylor quote? I've, I botched it, but, um, he said something like that before <laughs> about the 74s, but, um, yeah. So also, um, there was a little bit of, uh, smoke in there for anyone who wants it. Um, the M threes are on notice. Shelly's coming for you in the 63s. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Suzanne LaForge, um, uh, she's, she's incredible. I, you know, I don't know. Yeah. I, I kind of, we, I, I, I think we, I think I tried to talk some shit with her, but she, <laughs> yeah, she's, yeah, she's, she's strong. And you know? She's so nice. She's so yeah. nice too. So it's hard to like, really, but that's fun. It, like you said, it's about having like a fun rivalry that you can push each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly no M3 wants to get beat by an M4. Like that's got to fuel <laughs> them. That's got to fuel them. They see you in the rear view mirror getting closer and closer that's so right that's and really fun <laughs> yeah no. right i love it though yep there's no competition in the world for me i'm my own competition these are the co <laughs> <laughs> um yeah well that's that's awesome um you have a great attitude about it um so people that you look up to uh, in power team that you're a fan of um who are some people that you look up to and that you know um you like to watch and pay attention to well, my all-time hero is Sam Calhoun. Mm -hmm. She's, I, I don't know. She's just, uh, uh, she's a real mensch, you know, mm -hmm. she, she really is. So I, uh, you know, I look up to her. Um, I mean, there's a, Jen Thompson is just, I, I don't understand. She's, she's, she's one of the superheroes. I, I, don't, you know, yeah. she's, she's amazing. Um, and, you know, there's just, there's many other, Susie Gary is, is another one. Um, <clears throat> yeah. So, so um, Susie will be at, in Scottsdale. Um, oh, she for, will. For Raw Nationals and she'll be competing actually as well. Um, and she'll also be coaching a bunch of lifters as well. Um, so, I mean, Scottsdale, these nationals are going to be fun. We've got like a lot of superstars there in the masters, especially on the women's side. Yeah. Well, Sam, I'm going to, uh, Sam Calhoun's going to be my, my game day coach. Her okay. team's going to be there. She's got several masters lifters. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be fun. It really is. Yeah. This meet, uh, I tell everyone, um, this is the most fun of the year. Um, we've got all the age divisions. We've got the equipped, uh, nationals all in one day as well. And that brings its own level of excitement and everything with the equipped stuff. Um, so yeah, this is the best meet of the year. Um, I was just talking like, we, we're going to keep trying to feature this meet and make it bigger and spread it out across like maybe even more days so that everyone can kind of, um, get the spotlight a little bit more on each platform and stuff like that. Cause it's a two plot this year, it'll be two platforms and, um, all of the raw lifting will be done in two days. Um, but yeah, we're thinking about in the future, you know, just little ways to tweak it, to kind of feature some of the stars a little bit more and things like that. So, yeah, that's good. It'll be fun and exciting. Um, Julia, do you have any questions for her? Um, well, I guess, uh, is there anyone you're really looking uh, forward to meeting or at, at nationals? I mean, obviously Sam Calhoun um, yeah. and all her team. Um, and I know she has like, she's been coaching masters for a while because back, you know, a few years ago, she did a pro meet and then she turned around the next day and coached a bunch of masters. So um mm -hmm. Yeah, but is there anyone else you're you're looking forward to meeting there um, in person that you just, haven't? Or? Yeah, just friends that I've made already, you know, at previous um, previous meets. Um, yeah, Sam was, uh, I think this was maybe the same meet that you were just mentioned. I think it was the Arnold. Um, Probably, yeah. This not. Yeah, the, uh, uh, not this past year, but the year before, I guess. I, I don't know. I forget. But um, I, uh, that was the first meet I was going to, I didn't have a handler. Um, 
I was very nervous because uh, well, the Arnold was a big a big meat, and um, I lift in pounds. I don't do <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't do conversions well, you know, for kilos. And I didn't, you know, I didn't have anybody to help me out. And I was uh, nervous about it. And I figured I'll just wing it, you know, I'll just figure this out somehow. And um, as I was going into the uh, warm up room, uh, I was talking with somebody um, and, and of course mentioned this, (laughs) I didn't, I didn't have a handler and I didn't have anybody to help me out. I was nervous about it. And then there was this little voice from the corner. Uh, I think she was like sitting there, uh, you know, waiting for her lifters at the door or something. I don't know. It's a little voice said, well, I'll help you. (laughs) And it was Sam Calhoun. And she just, yeah, she took me and just, uh, I mean, she didn't know who I, you know, and folded me into her team. And, um, it was in it was just amazing you know what what a wonderful person um yeah. you know for her to do that and so yeah that's a that's a great origin story um yeah. for like you meeting sam calhoun did you know who she was at that at, time you know at that i think um uh, yes i did mm-hmm. but i don't know if it connected immediately yeah yeah, yeah. So. Like you kind of knew who she was, but you kind of were like found out later, like, wow, she's like one of the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, cool. And, and you're in around the same weight class. Like Sam's kind of an enigma. Um, she was a 63 forever. And, and, you know, that was like her weight class and she owned it in the U S for a while. Um, and then now she's like all over different weight classes. And like, there's not, it's like, there are no weight classes, um, in some of the competitions that she's doing now and stuff, but so she's kind of going all over the place. It's really interesting. She's got a really active uh, following on social media with her steps and her <laughs> uh, all her diet stuff and her questions of the day. Um, she's just a yeah. great person to have in the sport. She's doing a lot to push the sport forward. She is. Yeah. And her team is just growing. So, yeah. So um, I don't think, were you on, I, I, I vaguely remember hearing you on another podcast, but I wanted, yeah, you were on, were you on Solana's podcast? I was. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, but I still, I like, I, I don't remember about the details of your background. So let's go through like kind of some of your background story. Um, like take us back, like, where are you from? You know, where'd you go to school? Um, that kind of stuff. And then when did you get into lifting? Well, I, I grew up in Lubbock, Texas. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yeah. I yeah, would have never guessed but, that. Now you don't have like a Southern accent. No, no. Well, I was born in Ohio and then the family moved there. So, okay. Uh, so yeah, Lubbock, Texas. And uh, I was never um, an athlete by any means. You know, I've always been kind of sort of active, uh, you know, as when I was uh, a child, you know, we always, we took uh, uh tap, ballet and acrobats it was called acrobats back then not gymnastics so you know we would do that and that was also back in the day when in school there was always PE so we had yeah we had that and um you know over the years um there would be different um fitness fads that would come up and, you know, I probably, you know, dabbled in most of them, uh, you know, for varying lengths of time. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing really took, uh, you know, I mean, I, you know, back in the late seventies, early eighties, when uh, running and jogging got started, I started mm-hmm. with that. Um, there was, uh, I went through a yoga phase, mm-hmm. um, you know, and sampled different kinds of yoga uh okay. i think there was some pilates thrown in there i mean and nothing for very long uh at all yeah um and there was um there was a time also that i had a personal trainer at one of the you know powerhouse gyms and you know they she would take take me and 
lead me around to the different machines, which it was fun. I enjoyed it, but you know, also it's never really went anywhere. Yeah. So um, this was back in uh, 2016, uh, round about the time that I was going to turn 65 years old. Um, yeah. And this coincided at, at this time where I, um, uh, I realized I was losing muscle mass. I mean, I, I somehow it, it had been happening and I hadn't even noticed it. Mm -hmm. And for some reason around about that time, I noticed it and it's, you know, it's called sarcopenia. It's a natural process of aging. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it was kind of alarming. I mean, it's, I've never been a super muscular person at all, but yeah. when you start really losing that, um, it, it's noticeable. So around about that time uh, at work, I work in an emergency room. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist and it's a psych, uh, this is a psychiatric part of a general inner city, you know, uh, emergency room, a large okay. emergency room. So, um, and I worked with uh, one of the ER docs that I've worked with, had worked with for like 15 years. Um, you know, we were, I went to discuss a case with him or whatever. And um, he told me that he was going to be leaving. This was uh, Jonathan Sullivan, Dr. Sullivan, Sully. They call okay. Him. Yeah. And he, uh, I was like, well, where, where the hell are you going to go? What are you going to do? And he told me that he was going to, you know, had this gym and uh, he was going to, you know, training older people. Now I, I was really intrigued by that. And I had no idea that he was into all that. Um, so I asked him if I could come over and, uh, you know, see what he does. And he was like, sure. And he, he specifically trains older people. Uh, okay. He was at that time uh, writing a book together with um, Andy Baker and part of Starting Strength uh, Publishing. They were publishing it called The Barbell Prescription. And it had, okay. it had, it, that was round about the time they were just getting ready to publish it. It hadn't been a thing yet. Cool. So I went over to Sully's gym to see what he was doing. And, um, you know, I, there was this, uh, you know, tiny woman older than me lifting these heavy weights and these barbells. I had never seen anything like that before. I mean, um, you know, dumbbells and I didn't even know what a barbell was. I mean, this was something that happened in gyms that men did that, you know, who knows what that was all about. I it wasn't something I was familiar with. So it was just amazing to me that this tiny woman older than me was so strong and could do this. And I was like, well, I want to try this. So that's where I started. It was uh, April uh, 20, you know, in, in uh, 2016. Yeah. And two times a week started with uh just the just the barbell and, and he taught yeah he taught me the basics and uh, was it powerlifting what or was it like olympic no, lifting olympic lifting no. stuff it was okay. it was uh squat um right. bench uh overhead press okay and deadlift yeah. okay yeah that's the starting strength right doesn't exactly. Julia, yeah yeah okay okay gotcha yeah. It's, it's the whole starting strength sunk with a linear progression. Um, and, you know, that's how I got started. Wow. That's cool. And all yeah. because you happened to have a colleague that was into it and you asked, you were curious, you asked a question yeah. or two, and then next thing you know, you're best lifter at Worlds. Uh, you know, and it was right there in Sully's gym that, um, you know, that I got bit by the barbell bug, you know, I just, yeah. I, yeah. who knew, I didn't know that that was my sport. Um, uh, but I just, uh, really took to it. It was, uh, it was very challenging. It was very difficult. It's yeah. it, very hard for, uh, cause I was, um, I wouldn't even say I was deconditioned cause I had never been conditioned really. Mm -hmm. I never, uh, realized, uh, strength 
uh, certainly in any degree like this. So, um, so yeah, that's how I got started. And what do you think um, about it? It was what hooked you. Was it was it seeing um, physical changes in your body, or was it just like you know the feeling of accomplishment after a hard workout? Or what was it that you, you know, really seemed to hook you into powerlifting? You know, Paul, this is probably going to seem strange, but um, you know, I had never really felt strong. Uh huh. Um, there was some, there's some challenge there that just, you know, I was hooked, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I just really was, I had never, um, it has, it was just something that I had never experienced like that before. And do you think like, it felt like empowering to feel strong like that after? Oh yeah. yeah. You know, and you could, you know, I would see, uh, you know, you, I kept a log book. I still, I have my original, you know, I have all my log books all on paper, the you know, composition notebooks, it, the old fashioned kind. I write everything down. I got one sitting right over here. Yeah. yeah. I mean, well, I'm on my, I'm on my second one and pretty soon I'm going to be on my third, mm-hmm. um, you know, with, but the first one is, you know, with Sully's handwriting in it. it and, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's, I started with the barbell, just, just, just that, which was very heavy, very difficult. Um, I mean, I, I, uh, there were points in time where I didn't think I was ever going to be able to continue doing the squatting or whatever. I would have back pains and this would hurt and that would hurt. And, but little by little, and with the log book, you know, you're able to see I was making progress Mm -hmm. and that's, um, yeah, it's like, it just, it just grabs hold of you or at least me. And, uh, you know, it was just something that, um, that I, I guess, again, I was in competition with myself. I, Mm -hmm. I really wanted to best it, you know, I wanted to master this. So I was Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that a lot of people say about the sport that really get them into it is like in the early days, especially just trying to get PRs in the gym and that, you know, you kind of start to get this addiction to just being a little stronger than you were last week and then just keep doing that week after week after week. And then the next thing you know, like, you know, you're like, maybe I should start competing and, um, you know, go in and, and compete at nationals and stuff like that. So is that, when did you make the decision to start, go ahead and do a competition? Well, <clears throat> there was somebody, I don't know who, uh, I learned that, um, that there were competitions. I didn't know, you know, I, I, at first it started out with uh, starting strength, uh, strength lifting competitions with, uh, mm-hmm. it was squat, overhead press and deadlift. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, you know, I caught wind of it that there was uh, these competitions and and again, I somehow I I researched it, of course, because it's just my nature. And I found somebody, uh, a woman who was doing this, and it was like, oh well, okay, I need to beat her <laughs> if I'm going <laughs> to do this. And so the comment was, I had I had made the comment about wanting to, you know, wanting to get into one of these competitions, and um, someone said, well, you're not going to win. And that mm-hmm. did it. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, well, we'll see about that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I may not win right away, but I will win. <laughs> so, oh, wow. So that person yeah. is eating their words these days, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, that's amazing. You have, you're, so you're just a very competitive person. I mean, like right out from the gate, you know, you're, you're like eyeing up the competition and thinking about um, trying to win. So like, you're like the Terminator. We got to call you the <laughs> Shelly, the Terminator, like watch that's out. If right. she gets you in her sights, she's coming for you. Um, that's, that's really awesome. Um, J- Julie, did you want to add it uh, or ask anything? I just want to make sure to check in with you and see if you have any questions. Um, I don't want to dominate the whole conversation here. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, so I'm working with, um, women who are 40 to 70, uh, trying to train them for strength. 
so I thought that that was really cool, um, your story about how, how you started. Um, do you have any maybe words for, for women who, who want to get started, but for whatever reason don't or are, um, you know, shy about maybe training under a barbell? You know, it's, uh, I, I do think it's important to find uh, someone to teach you the basics uh, who also has experience um, training older persons. It, because not that we're special snowflakes in any particular way, but, um, you know, we... I think I think the older you get, the more um, the more issues you have, uh, and and also oftentimes, like for um, certainly women of my generation, uh, you know, you just didn't get into stuff like this. So it's really kind of starting from square one, which um, is one thing if you're in your thirties. But if you're in your 60s, it's uh, it's kind of a different ball game. So there might be mobility issues. There might be um, all kinds of other, uh, yeah. you know, health issues or things that have been accumulated, inj old injuries uh, that can flare up. So I think it it probably would be a good idea to find someone with some experience um, training older people. And um, yeah, you just, and be patient. You know, it's, it's all about consistency and effort. You have to, you have to hang in there with it. Uh, even, even, uh, even when you get to points in time when you feel like, uh, you know, you can't go on or you can't do it. I had, I had one, um, I had one woman send me a message <laughs> Um and is she, you know, I've had a lot of questions. Well, how do you get so strong? So I'm, I'm doing a kind of a vlog on my Instagram because I've had people ask me, you know, how do you get so strong? So I thought, well, I'll just put it out there. You know, they can see what I do. So I had a, a message sent to me from one woman uh, who was getting started and she, uh, she asked me, well, how do you, you know, she was having trouble lifting the weights you know, the, the ways to put on the barbell. Yeah. I've been there, <laughs> you know, it's like mm -hmm. picking up a 45 pound plate is not an easy thing to do. If you've never done it before, even, even a 45 pound barbell is, mm -hmm. you know, a huge challenge in the beginning. You have to start with a, a smaller, like a, you know, a 30 pound bar or something, a smaller bar. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you know, for me, it was, uh, it was the same thing. And, um, you know, I just, uh, you just do it, you know, I, I wouldn't allow people to help me, I would wanted to do it on my own, because I, I figured, you know, this will also help make me strong. <laughs> if yeah. I pick up these, you know, these you know, loading up the bar myself, you know, and not having somebody do it for me. So, um, so yeah, it's just really starting from square one. And I think uh, it, it takes a special kind of coach uh, to be able uh, to coach someone uh, who's older too, that's really going to be starting, uh, you know, at a square one when you're older. So was it, do you think for especially women of your age, yeah. that there's a, a widely held belief that like just women shouldn't do strength training or shouldn't lift weights, stuff like that. Oh, absolutely. I can't tell you how many people have like, you know, you're going to hurt yourself. You're going to hurt your back. You can't, you know, I bought into it too. Mm -hmm. And that, and you have to, somehow I just, you know, had to override all that. Um, I mean, I'm, I still get nervous about it from time to time, but um, not like I used to. Yeah. Yeah, but even, uh, I mean, I, you, we just, um, even navigating around a gym uh, was, was something, I mean, like I, I mentioned, I had a personal trainer, well, she would lead me around. It wasn't like I could walk into a gym and know what to do, not at all. Yeah. So, um, 
So yeah, I had to learn all of that. Uh, the pandemic was was good for me. Uh, <laughs> you know, that was the silver lining because you know I had to I had to set up a gym in my home and uh, you know I had to figure out how to do all this stuff on my own whether I wanted to or not. So. Yeah. yeah, that's a very inspiring story. I mean, you're you're a big inspiration for women, especially and of all people of your age. Um, and it's it's what I love is just how fiery you are, like and so competitive. Um, I think it's it's probably a common like misconception that as you get older, you just like are less competitive or like these competitive urges and things just like go away at some age. But I'm happy to see that like it doesn't and that you're you know, you can still get stronger if you haven't started. Um, if even if you have been lifting for a long time, you can still get stronger and those competitive urges never go away. So no, like you're going to be don't. competing with people for the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, even for people who have been lifting, I mean, lifting at different decades in your life is going to be a different experience. Uh, it's not mm -hmm. always going to be the same, you, you know, someone's not going to be able to lift exactly what they lifted when they were in their twenties, but at each stage, it's going to be a new challenge. And um, that's, what's so cool about powerlifting, I think. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's cool to have someone like yourself out here. That's kind of paving the way and showing, you know, um, women, especially, you know, that they can do this and yeah. um, that some of the preconceived ideas that maybe we've had in past generations and things like that, that's all out the window now. And I think a younger generation we're seeing, obviously you see it in the sub juniors in, in power in America and in worlds and stuff. And, and you definitely see it in the open division where women are dominating the sport. I mean, oh, at yeah. Sheffield women broke way more world records than the men did. Yep. Um, it's super competitive. So, you know, people like you, and then, you know, in every age category down the line, there's inspiring women who are doing it and um, leading the way. So I think it's the future. Well, there's be really there's strong. men too. There's John mm -hmm. LaFleur. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who I think now is, is in PA. Isn't yeah. he? Come over. Yep. Yeah. Is He's good. coming. I was, very happy, I was very happy to see that. Yeah. Um, but there's others. I mean, uh, Anthony Harris, uh, you know, yep. Ricks, uh, da Dave Ricks, yep. Dave Ricks. I mean, there's, there's older folks out there, you know, mm -hmm. but. Um, and we have a, we have a Dave Ricks figure on the come up on the women's side with Kimberly Walford, where she'll probably be totaling numbers that can be open competitive in the open as far as we can see until she's an M2, M3, something like that, she'll still be competitive just like Dave Ricks. She's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she is. Yeah. yeah. Um, Dave Ricks is always a big um, inspiration for, for people too. Like, you know, I remember when he was competing against Russ or he, and it was like, he was leading in squat. And that was the year I think that Russ had missed his first two squats or something like this. And um, Dave Ricks was in, was in first place you know, and this is just like two years ago. Um, yeah. so it was very inspiring, um, for people who didn't start do, doing powerlifting as sub juniors, or even maybe if they don't start lifting until they're in their thirties and stuff, looking at people like yourself and John and these people, um, it's, it's very inspiring and gives us all hope. Yeah. Sure. Well, they've been at it for a long time, then they're continuing to get strong and to set records. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's very inspiring. And do you feel just like being strong in general that throughout your everyday life, oh. that it's a benefit? Yeah. Oh, it's indescribable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's uh, it, energy level. Uh, just, it's like, I feel like I've regained the use of my body really. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, I mean, the, the benefits from it uh, are just, yeah, you know, it's just so many of them. I mean, you know, sleep is better, energy is better, um, it, all of it. You know, I mean, I can, I can. People will see me because I'm an old woman, right? Uh, do Do you want me to help you carry this or do that? And it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I only was, have to make one trip from the car into the house with my groceries. You know, I don't uh -huh. have to. Yeah, it, it's uh, it's night and day, and and that's what I wish that especially older women 
could uh, somehow override um, the stigma of it and just jump in there and get started because um, at no matter what age that you're at, uh, you can experience benefit from it. You don't have to, you know, squat, uh, you know, two times your body weight or whatever. You, it, just getting started with it in the beginning it will give you benefits. Yeah. For sure. For sure. And I mean, I think it's just, it's one of those things that's hard to explain to people um, it is. how, because it's, it's like, it's like one of these things that it's like every minute of every day I'm stronger than yeah. I was. And it, if it's like every little thing, if you were to add it up and quantify it in some way, it would be like some huge number of the ways that it benefits you, you know, cumulatively over, you know, just even every day, every week, every month. Yeah. So. I mean, I've never at, at 72 years old, I'm stronger now than I have ever been in my life. Now that now, if I was powerlifting when I was younger, I may not be able to say that, but, yeah. um, but I, I didn't. And so, it, you know, now at this point, I'm, I'm stronger than I ever have been. And I'm kind of interested to just see how far it goes. Yeah. We'll see what we can do. And I mean, it's, it's good to have smart coaches. Like you said, that was like the first thing when, when Juliet asked about it. Um, because I do think if you're just doing powerlifting on your own, you're kind of just exploring on YouTube and podcasts and stuff and doing your own programming oh, I in, the can't early, in the early days, that is when you're the most vulnerable for injuries yes. because you're pushing, you, you want to hit PRs and stuff, but your body's just not quite ready for it. Oh. And, um, those injuries could probably be more severe, you know, as you get older in age. So it's like, let's make sure you have a good coach, probably yeah. more important than a 20 year old could just, you know, max out in the gym every day and, um, probably be all right. But, uh, um, yeah, I was, I was very fortunate. I just, you know, I had, um, Sully, uh, it was, a, it was kind of a group training. There was two or three other people there with me at the time, twice a week. And just from the ground up, I was taught the basics, um, you know, of everything. And in a, in a slow, methodical, linear fashion. And um, yeah, I was just able to gradually get stronger and learn the lifts. It you know, I'm still learning the lifts, you know, it's not like it's, it's not like the process ends at some point, you know, you continue with it, but I was just um, very fortunate. So I, I continued with him twice a week Um for almost a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And then I, I really wanted more. Uh, I, I, there's so, I just, I had a sense that I needed to be training more frequently. Plus um, Solly's gym was like an hour away from me. It was just becoming increased. It was becoming impossible to get over there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's when I started, um, uh, with the with online with Andy Baker, who's was also the co-author. He did the programming part of the barbell prescription that the okay. that book, yeah. So um and started out in his uh his a uh, uh, barbell club a Facebook group uh started in that and then um after a bit uh, uh you know one uh, one on one coaching online you know because he's in Houston um, and, you know, I was just very fortunate again. I mean, he's a, a phenomenal strength coach and we've been able to, uh, to really get me strong. <laughs> so, For sure. To say yeah. the least. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so then was he the one that convinced you to do your first like sanctioned powerlifting meet or when did that no. happen? No, the, the way that happened, um, this was pre pandemic mm -hmm. and, I, one of the gyms that I went to, I met um, Gina Hensley. I don't know if mm -hmm. yeah you know, she I've she's actually she, yeah she's actually the she was a junior uh, world champion. Yeah, and, and then uh, she's now um, the uh, she's like now the meet director for USAPL in Michigan. Okay. And, yeah, but at that time when I met her, she was not. But we, but we went to the same gym. So I, I met her there and she, um, 
she kind of, I feel like she was kind of a mentor for me for a while. Um, you know, she, I learned how to put on knee sleeves from Gina, <laughs> you know, and I think it was uh, there that, uh, and through her that I, that I decided to, uh, to try a USAPL meet, the Rookie Rumble. And that was, uh -huh. that was my first one. And uh, yeah, I was hooked. Yeah. I was hooked after that. Yeah. And you took home two gold medals, it looks like, uh, M3 and Open. Um, yeah. So, you know, right from the, <laughs> right from the start, like I said, you're undefeated. Um, so yeah. it's, but I find it amazing that you mentioned again, like, here's this sort of, um, you know, fork in the road moment, you start going to a different gym. And yeah. suddenly you meet this person, Gina, and if, who yeah. knows if she never comes along, you don't never meet her. Maybe you never do powerlifting meet, and exactly. you just get super strong. Maybe you get into bodybuilding or strongman or something. Yeah. Um, and then the same thing, you know, with your colleague, Dr. Sully that you met yeah. sort of like, if you didn't happen to just ask a couple questions and follow up how your life could be so, so much different right now, you know, totally. like, so like this yeah. one little one person can make such a huge impact in the trajectory of your life. Um, it's, that's how so many people's stories are that we've talked to on the podcast. It's it, and it's sad too, because powerlifting it's, it's, it's a small thing. Mm -hmm. It's not, I would never have known, never. Yeah. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, it's just really, I was just at luck in the right place at the right time and encountered uh, the right people. So, yeah, it's a crazy world. Um, it's a, a thing. Thank so goodness. You said powerlifting is oh, go ahead, Julia, go ahead. Oh, I mean, you said powerlifting is, is a small community and, and niche, you know, yeah. it's, 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 pretty tiny it's actually grown um pretty exponentially since like 2015 I know you've been in it since like 2019 what do you think of the changes that have um that have that have, that have happened in the, the sport and uh, yeah the yeah the U.S. yeah the USAPL uh, IPF divorce was tough mm -hmm. it was uh yeah that that really was I was uh I was kind of drifting there for a short period of time. Um, you know, I, it, I, I, I did have an opportunity. I, I, I could have gone to worlds, but I didn't have a passport at the time. It was going to take too long. It was right when the pandemic hit. It was, yeah, it was, um, I was lost. Um, then uh, the, the Virginia pro, um happened which was a fantastic meet uh, there will yeah. never be another meet like that um you know i mean um i came this close to to beating anthony harris yeah. <laughs> I mean, because of the because of the way it was set up you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it, it was uh and actually now with because i i finally was able to get my deadlift um, if, if I was as strong then as I am now, I would have beat him. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, no, it was, it was so much fun. It was, um, it was just a, a phenomenal meet, but yeah, I didn't, you know, I wasn't sure what I was going to do. Um, I, I was just really sad that, um, you know, that the politics had to, ha had to happen like that. It still saddens me. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, but it is what it is. What are you going to do? Yeah. I mean, it is a difficult time for all of us. Um, I was yeah. in the same exact boat too, of like, what's going to happen. And, um, we all, you know, most of us at power of team America came from USAPL. So it's, yeah. um, we all have a, a soft spot in our hearts for everything related to it. Um, but you, you like really, I mean, you've done a lot of, you've been on all the biggest stages. Um, I mean, other than Sheffield, um, you know, you've done the Arnold, You've done the Virginia Pro, the first Virginia Pro, you know, which was really big and really a big deal. It was. Um, you've been on the Masters of Iron and Arnold. You've done, you know, nationals in two different federations and won national championships in, in two different federations. <clears throat> and then, of course, you've been to Worlds. So, I mean, but as far as what Julie was asking, like, you know, we're seeing changes like the Virginia pro is a good example where that kind of like was a catalyst meet, I think that kind of pushed the sport forward and showed us what is possible that there's something more possible than like just a, a meet in a gym 
ironically that was in a, a huge gym, but, uh, you know, mm-hmm. being in a gym and then, you know, you kind of see the evolution of that with Sheffield happening, which Sheffield was supposed to happen back in 2020 before COVID ever, uh, you know, before COVID happened, but we're kind of seeing the sport level up and level up again and level up again. And then, you know, you were at the worlds in Canada, which was a, yeah. a really nice production, really well done. So, yeah. So just tell us about, you know, the, these changes that you've seen and um, where, where you think it's going. You know, I'm just excited uh, for the master's lifters, really. And I think I think PA has, um, you know, you guys have have really kind of put us out there um, and IPF, too, uh, in a way that wasn't happening before, which I really appreciate. Um, You know, I mean, my loyalty is there for that. It's. um, I think that's uh, that's an important aspect of it. I've heard I heard on another <laughs> uh, podcast, which I won't I won't mention which one, um, that uh, masters lifters are important. Why? Because they stay after in meets and they help out with and they referee and and you know they they help with the logistics of it. And I was like. <laughs> But you know what? We lift too. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. You're just as every bit of an athlete as anyone else. Yeah. Um, so with your kind of uh, stubborn, competitive <laughs> uh, uh, mindset, are you like never going to rest? <laughs> you know, never help I, out after after you I get was, done lifting? Well, actually, I was a referee for USA. Okay. Okay. And I, I, I was able to to ref one, one meet, you know, and then the pandemic hit. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, we'll see. You can be like, um, grandfathered in to being, uh, a referee if you have USAPL credentials and stuff like that, just FYI. But no, I, I mean, think it's funny. Just sort of like your, your attitude has always been like, if someone says something like you're going to, you're going to show them wrong and, um, yeah. just finish your last deadlift and drop the mic and walk away. That's right. <laughs> and like, That's right. We're, I'm not helping with anything. <laughs> <laughs> I, d- I helped by lifting, uh, yesterday and, uh, giving you guys a hell of a performance. And, uh, so yeah. Um, all right. Well, I don't want to go too crazy long with you. I know you're busy. I want to just kind of, let's get people oh, totally caught up to speed with, you know, the last year for you. So, um, talk us a little bit about nationals last year. Um, it was a similar situation as you were describing before with your game day coach, you know, like, like how did you find your game day coach? I know you were coached by Susie that day and how that all came together. And then, you know, tell us about the performance, like what happened with your deadlifts and stuff at, at nationals last year. At that, Well, I mean, I had, I, I had to do sumo and it was, uh, mm-hmm. Uh, you know, basically a new lift for me. And I, it certainly was not one of my best performances at all. Mm-hmm. But, um, but, you know, I got the first one. Yep. Yep. <laughs> so that was, that was that. Uh, yeah, Susie, she, that was, that was great. You know, she was, that was a, a really unique experience for me. She's, she's amazing. Um, and yeah, that was kind of, that was kind of a last minute thing as well wasn't it it? was yeah it was and she you know she was able to um you know she was able to include me um I didn't need as much attention as some of her other lifters which were which was good but um but yeah that was that was that was quite unique to be uh to have her in my corner absolutely yeah. I mean, I mean, I remember you coming in and I don't know if you were saying that you didn't have, or or you were trying to get Susie or something like that, but I know it was kind of like a, a little bit of a last minute thing. And Susie was it had was. other lifters and she, she was did. running back and forth because there was actually, I believe there was at least two platforms going on when you were lifting, maybe three. I know yeah. there were three platforms, but I'm not sure if it was during your session. Well, and she- I remember seeing Susie just like running back she and was. forth. Yeah. She, what a trooper. She was able to, she was able to include me. Um, you know, Sam, she, she coaches Sam, uh, Calhoun. Yeah. So, um, and Sam was not able to be at that. Um, I guess, I don't know, I think maybe because the USAPL thing, I'm not sure why yeah. she was not able to be there at that time. 
So, um, you know, she, she referred me to Susie and Susie was really, yeah, very busy, but she was able to, to kind of include me in her group. So that was, that was really, that was really special for me. Yeah. Well, now it makes sense um, because I remember following your training up to nationals and really trying to feature you as one of the star lifters um, that was going to be at this meet and everything. And um, everything was going great with your lifting and everything as far as I could see. But I didn't realize that you had to switch to sumo. And I do remember seeing your opener on deadlift and having it be like a little slow, I think. And then seeing your second one, which I think you locked it out and everything, but they got you for a hitch or something or up and down or something. Is that right? Yeah. It was like an up and down thing. Yeah. Yeah. So you had the strength for it, but it was kind of a technique. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Like I said, I will never, I will, sumo is hard. (laughs) You know, it's not, it's not an easy, it's not an easier lift. It's not, yeah, it's, it's very technical. I, uh, you know, then when I had to go back to conventional, I don't know, I think it might've just been a relief that I didn't have to do sumo anymore. I'm not sure, (laughs) but, Mm -hmm. um, but right now I'm just kind of keeping my fingers crossed and hoping, but you know what, I think there's benefits to both. And and at at some point in time, I could actually see myself uh, training both, Uh, maybe sumo as an accessory lift or something on a secondary day. But yeah, I could see it. Yeah, for sure. And then like at that meet, your total had gone down. Um, So, you know, you had done, so you totaled 312 and a half, you had totaled 316 and 322 and a half in the past. How was that like mentally? Because I remember seeing you, you were, you were you seemed like totally fine other than, I mean, you missed, you missed two deadlifts and you weren't happy. You weren't like enthusiastic about it by any means, but you didn't seem like you were like walk away crying or like feeling too bad for yourself or anything. You won a national title. Yeah. No, I qualified for that. That was the goal. Yeah. Now the fact that my total went down, I was not real happy about that. Matter of fact, I don't really um, have, I, I don't really have um, uh, goals in terms of, oh, you know, I want to bench 200. I want to deadlift 400. Uh, I want I want to squat 300. I don't have numbers in my head like that, mm-hmm. but I would like each meet to see my total increase. Yeah. Doggone it, even if it's a chip. <laughs> you know, yep. I would rather... I would rather have my total continue to increase. So, yeah. I mean, I, I have to just think like the mental anguish of it has to be a little more when you're an M4 than when you're like in the open or a junior or something like this, you yeah. know, because I think they think no matter what happens, I'm always going to keep getting stronger and stronger as I go. Do you have any kind of doubts or anything when you walked away or were you just like, nope, I'm right back in the gym and just, you know, pushing on? Oh yeah. I had no doubts. Yeah. I mean, I knew that I I was going to, I knew I was going to have to build up that deadlift, you know, it was Uh just, yeah, it was, it was new. I, I just had a lot of work to do on it really. It's, I just focused on that part. Yeah. No, there was no doubts. (laughs) And, and I mean, you turned around and four months later, PR your total broke the world record in every discipline total won the world championship, best lifter, all the, all the accolades we've mentioned, but, um, that's a quick turnaround only four months. And, um, to be going through this thing where you miss two deadlifts and, you know, otherwise going up to that point, you were five for five at the meet in, in Orlando, um, nationals last year, but only a four month turnaround. How did you get things straightened out? You ended up, you know, going eight for nine, only missing one squat and not missing any deadlifts. So what happened in those four months uh, that turned things around? Oh, I don't know. I just, you know, I just, (laughs) I just keep at it each time. I just, you know, yeah. um, You didn't overthink it. It sounds like no, not at all. I mean, you know, it's just uh, that that's, that's one of the nice things about powerlifting is, you know, you can't really get anxious about the overall picture um, at the time, it's just, you know, you have heavy weight on your back and that's really all that you can think about, <laughs> you know, and you just go from, 
from you know even each training day uh just from one lift to the next and um i kind of like that perspective so i try I not to zoom out too much you know i just kind of uh keep my head to the to the grindstone and and just keep plugging along yep i love that mentality that's a champion uh my mentality right there i mean and i i think uh it's just so interesting that you never did any sports with this attitude that you have. I mean, this is a very, like people miss one lift and totally get in their head, second guess, question their whole life after, um, you know, Oh, my total went down and maybe I'm never going to get stronger again. And you're just like, Nope, I'm just keep putting one foot in front of the other. That is what the best athletes do. You know, it's like you, you do, you have adversity and you just keep pushing through it. And then you just, you know, keep going and keep going. And it's more about persistence and will than it is, you know, about any of the specific details of your training or anything like that. Yeah, no, it's just, I, I think the consistency is the big part. You just, and, and even, even when I had, um, you know, the injuries knock on wood, you know, somehow they weren't devastating ones, but at the time, yeah, like with the bicep thing, I was, you had visions of shoulder replacement and rotator oh, wow. cuff and, you know, all the worst scenarios get into your head. Yeah. Um, but overriding all of that, I knew that I had to just keep moving. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's the most important thing. And, you know, that somehow carried me through, you know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. All right. So a couple last questions about worlds from last year, Yeah, um, going up to Canada. I mean, what did it feel like just putting on the USA singlet and being on the team and all that kind of stuff? Well, I couldn't, I, the USA singlet, I couldn't do the SBD one. Oh, because they, wouldn't, I let me, I didn't no, they wouldn't let me wear my ins or knee sleeves. And I had oh. to, <laughs> I think I some people just voice. broke that rule. No, I, I, you know, I couldn't do it. I felt like it. I would have all kinds of bad karma being <laughs> zoomed in on me because, you know, that's you're right. Yeah, I couldn't do it. So um, I went I went with another uh, another singlet, another USA singlet, not SBD, but the A7, the, right? You were in the yeah, A7. Right? A7. Yeah, A7. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, so I could wear my ins or knee sleeves. <laughs> okay. So, but then, I mean, you know, uh, how was it otherwise, like just being there representing oh, your country and like, you know, yeah. you always had these thoughts of going to worlds and stuff. Oh, it was amazing. It was amazing. Yeah. Everybody was, uh, you know, the, the whole team, um, Bill and Miriam, I mean, they just, it, it was, it was a very special time. It really was. Yeah. We got to uh, give a shout out Bill Helmick. Yeah. Um, Bill Helmick was a head coach. Miriam uh, Elm was an assistant coach. They do so much work and the master's team is so big. Yeah. There is a lot of moving parts. Um, <clears throat> and there's a lot of coordination. A lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes. Those two handle business big time. <clears throat> oh yeah. I mean, they just, just a phenomenal job at handling everything, everything. It was, uh, yeah. um, yeah, you know, it was just a lot of fun. It really was. I mean, it was, it was intense, but it was also just a lot of fun. Um, and, um, you know, it's just uh, to be able to be there and be on the team and, you know, the podium, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was really nice. Yeah. So tell us about that. Uh, when they played the national anthem <clears throat> for you it's up there on that to cry. Yeah, I know it's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty intense. Yeah. I don't think I, well, I did tear up, but I don't think I bawled or anything, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was really a special moment. Yeah. And I mean, it's something that you have been thinking of for a long time and then uh, kind of be kind of weird, like, did it sink in right away? Like when you're up there or, you know, how, I just imagine like, it's like one of these like lifelong or in your case, however long goal, you know, um, and then to have it fulfilled and they're playing the national anthem and all that it has to just be crazy. Yeah, it was, it was, it really was. I just felt very, uh, very proud. And, uh, you know, it was just very fortunate to be able to be there. It was, it was, it was very cool. And, uh, did it feel like you're on a team 
um, that, that like you were there with Team USA. I know you're yeah. probably friends with people from other countries and stuff too, but. Yes, no, absolutely. It was, uh, I think being, uh, being a part of that and being a team is, it was also just a, a, a really important aspect of it. Yeah, it was very cool. And especially like you're someone that trains pretty much mostly alone. You're yep. training in your, in your home gym and everything like that. So um, just getting out there and just being with all the other lifters, like going out to dinner and stuff. I imagine it was just a blast. It was, it was. Cool. Um, all right. So Julia, do you have any other questions for, Oh, um, one last thing I want to, or do you have any questions, Julia, about worlds or anything, winning best lifter going undefeated, any of that kind of stuff? <laughs> Oh, no, I just, I, I thought it was funny when you said, you, you know, you want to improve your total, um, <laughs> I, a chip at a time, <laughs> but anything, even if it's, chip. and you, you, um, you actually chipped the world record. So you had a uh, 325.5. So you did get that chip in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not gonna, not gonna leave those chips. <laughs> yeah. As they say, yeah. It looks like you took it on bench. <clears throat> so uh, cool. And who was handling you? Was it Bill? Bill? Yeah. Bill? All right. All right. Cool. Bill, our man. Uh, Bill is one of the nicest guys in the sport. Super nice. And just, you know, has done so much for the sport as well. Like, I don't, people don't, know, some people may not know who Bill Helmick is, but um, he's done so much for Powerlifting America, so much for the sport in years past, um, so much for the Masters athletes in particular, um, being a master himself, he's actually yeah. an M five. Wow. Um, which they don't have that category yet in the IPF, but they better make one. Cause Shelly, Shelly eventually will be an M five. <laughs> um, and she's coming for all the gold and all the gold medals and all the <laughs> world records. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but, and also, you know, you talked about your total, your total has gone up 40 kilos, um, since That's you started, cool. I yeah. mean, that's huge. And I mean, the, you were, how oh, you were 68 in your first meet. Yeah. So for people think, out there, just think if I would have discovered this, you know, like 50 years ago, <laughs> you'd be a real problem. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but I mean, just for people who think that, you know, you can't get stronger at your age. I mean, if 68 is your first meet you've in just three years here, you've put, 40 kilos on your total. I mean, that's a big amount. I mean, that's, that's a, I mean, that's what you expect from people in all age groups, you know, open juniors, all of them to make this kind of progress. Yeah. So it can and, be done. And the, and the, the myth, unfortunately out there is, you know, you, you can't do that when you get older, it's just all downhill, you know, which is just not true. It's just not true. I was able to, um, I was able to stop that muscle loss, that sarcopenia, and actually put muscle on. Uh, you know, and again, I'm not, you know, I, I think this is something that's possible for just about anybody uh, to do that. Uh, you know, as long as the thing is, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not, uh, sometimes it's not even fun. Uh, you know, it's hard work. And um, I think uh, once you're able to take the step and do it, then yeah, you can benefit from it. And, uh, you know, the, the, all those, all the stigma and all the previous belief that, well, you know, it's all over and done with, it's all downhill. Once you, you can't put muscle on, it's just not true. You know, at least for me anyways. So no, you're, you're walking proof, living proof, um, uh, huge inspiration for anyone that sees you. I mean, like I said, I mean, you, your arms are jacked right now. They're popping out <laughs> of your sleeves. Um, and I saw you in person last year and, and you're jacked. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, and it's, it's cool to see. I mean, and like you said, you're not like a genetic freak or like an athletic, no. uh, outlier or anything like this, who, no. who's like super doing sports your whole life and just happen to pick up power of thing when you're late, but you're already super strong. You weren't strong and no. you, you hadn't done really much of anything as far as a, you know, physical fitness stuff. And so I think that's why your story is like resonates so much with people is because it's like you said, if you can do it, anyone can. Yeah, it's true. 
All right. So we'll, I got some quick hitters for you. Um, okay. unless, unless Julia has anything else and then, and then we'll wrap this up. All right. Um, Go right ahead. <laughs> all right. So what is your day job? I am a psychiatrist. Uh, and I work, uh, it's emergency room psychiatry. Actually, I, I work in uh, a crisis center, which is, um, a psychiatric emergency room, part of a general emergency room department. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So just more proof that powerlifting is not just meatheads. We've got psychiatrists, people working in emergency rooms, doctors, other, you know, all different types of people in powerlifting. So yep. Um, it's cool. I always like to ask that question just for that reason to show, like we have a real diversity of people in powerlifting, um, from all walks of life. So, um, where do you train? Where do I train? Yeah. Oh, what to be a psychiatrist? No, no, no. Uh, for, for powerlifting. <laughs> we already mentioned basement? it. Yeah. We already mentioned it in, in your in basement. My basement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like when the pandemic hit, um, I was so fortunate. I, for some reason, I figured this is not going to be good. So I, I rushed out and over uh, to the, uh, there's an American fitness store <laughs> for, mm -hmm. they have like home fitness equipment. Uh, that's a few blocks away from me. I, I zoomed over there really fast and was able to get a squat rack a, it was a really crummy one. I didn't care. A squat rack and, uh, you know, uh, I had a barbell and some, some weights and just enough to where I could continue training off the floor. And I happened to get there uh, just before a whole crowd of people, you know, came into that store and bought everything um, you know, off the floor. So I, I, and I was fortunate that I was able to get that squat rack. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's, um, the pandemic really forced me. Cause I, I mean, what was I going to do? I panicked and it's like, I had to continue to train. <laughs> there was yeah. no, there, I, I didn't have an option. So, um, so yeah, I was able to, and it's something I had thought about, uh, but I don't, know if I was going to be honest with myself. If it wasn't for the pandemic, I really ever would have taken the plunge and, mm -hmm. you know, set up uh, a gym in my, in my home, which I now have, and I'm really happy there. <laughs> so. Yeah. I, I was lucky that I had one, uh, had a, a garage gym and stuff like oh. just had, had been building it before the pandemic. And then yeah. um, it came in handy with uh, having some of the boys from the gym come over and, and being able to do their, get their training and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you guys aren't following Shelly already, it's Shelly underscore and a N N underscore 28. You will see her doing pull-ups, squat, bench, deadlift, <laughs> all this stuff in, in her basement, um, training all the time. And she posts a lot of all, I think you're posting all of your training now going into the Yeah. Yep. All right. Another question. Where did you grow up? In Lubbock, Texas. Love it. Okay. Yep. And what was your first sport? Oh, uh, um, I guess like acrobatics or something that you yeah, were saying. I mean, we had, uh, we took tap ballet and acrobats. Yeah. But mm -hmm. the, in, and in school we had, um, I never played, I think we played kickball. Um, I was really good at the hundred yard dash. I think it was, was, does that sound like a thing? Yeah. 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 hundred yeah. yard dash. It sounds like I'm not, I don't know that much about track. It was a hundred meter too. I mean, I'm not sure what it was, Yeah, but I was good. I was, I, you know, I, I was fast. Nice. Uh, I remember that, but yeah, I mean, there was horseback riding a little bit of that. I mean, it's just, there was no sport that, uh, you know, I really took to, I mean, a little bit of everything. Well, yeah. I think you and I should have a foot race in Scottsdale and see who's faster. <laughs> I don't know if I can do that anymore. Oh. If I say if I say you can't, what would you say, Julia? Oh, I used to do track too. It could be all three of us. It could okay. be yeah, all three of us. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do. Say, I do remember though. I was pretty fast. Yeah. Oh, or I, I think I think I was pretty fast too back in the day. So well, let's see. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> If we challenge Shelly to anything, she'll kick our ass. <laughs> um, uh, so when you're not powerlifting, what's your idea of a good time? 
Like if you want to take a vacation from real life, what would you do? Oh my gosh. Uh, and, and I can't power lift. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. Like pretend the world stops and you can just have this fantasy, uh, vacation or whatever you would do. Um, and you wouldn't miss any work or miss any training or anything like that. It was just like a timeout. What would you do? Oh my gosh. I probably would just take a nap. <laughs> I would, I would have a, a, a staycation at home and just, uh, you know, hang out and relax and, and yeah, just, uh, no worries. Yeah. You'll be surprised how common that is the answer <laughs> for most power lifters. Cause you know, uh, we're talking to the highest level power to world champions, best lifters at world and stuff. And none of, none of them are doing powerlifting as a full-time job. So it's like they're being professional level athletes yeah. with all that entails with nutrition and, and, and training and coaching and, and then balancing it with having families, having careers and all this other stuff that I think a lot of us are just like you said, like you said, if I had, if I could just push pause for two days, I'd probably just stay in my house and, and chill and watch Netflix. Hang out, yeah. yeah. Hang out in my backyard. And I, yeah. I would just. <laughs> All right. So, um, if you are going on vacation somewhere, do you prefer mountains or beaches or neither? Uh, probably a beach beach. All right, cool. Um, oh shoot. There's no beaches in Mongolia. You have to, uh, come to the Mongolia Cayman Islands. I don't know. I don't know. Mongolia is awful far away. Yeah. I don't, that's uh, something to think about. Maybe hey, there's still time. They changed where Junior Worlds was last year. Like I don't know what four months out. they have to change it. They they just I heard a rumor about Spain. Is that true? I have heard nothing. Oh. I haven't heard any rumors about this. I what I've been hearing is that a lot of masters that would go to worlds normally are talking about going to the North American regional championships in the yeah. Cayman Islands. Cayman Islands would be cool. Yeah, yeah, that that will that's a that's definitely there, uh, and uh, but yeah, Mongolia. To be honest, I don't know about that. Yeah, speaking of beaches, um, you know, um, Cayman Islands, the North American regionals. Um, it depends on your your competition frequency and how comfortable you are competing that that often. But you could even work that into going there and going to wherever they end up having oh. worlds as well, uh -huh. um, just as a backup. But we'll yeah, see. um, there's some gotta people quali got to qualify to get there first, you know, can't go to, can't go to Ron Nance and bomb out or anything like that. Oh, please. I mean, you know, anything can happen. <laughs> Knock on wood. That, that, that can't happen. We can't no. let that happen. No. Um, okay. A couple more here. Uh, do you have any nicknames for me? Yeah. No. What do people call you? Doc. <laughs> doc or, or shelly okay yeah. doc okay yeah. um no one's called you the terminator before huh no <laughs> oh, okay we'll have to make that stick we'll have to make that stick um okay uh who's a person that you look up to in powerlifting or in other strength sports i know you already mentioned a few but uh, if you want to mention them again yeah sam calhoun yeah she's uh i think she's she's just she's just a really solid person a very nice person who gives a lot you know, just, just really, uh, really admire her. Yeah. She's so dedicated to the sport. She does so much. Work. Um, <clears throat> okay. What is your favorite sport to watch? Probably powerlifting. Powerlifting. All right. And um, do you, do you have a favorite football team? Nope. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't like football. No, um, I mean, have... back, in, back in the day I, I watched basketball, but that was, that was uh, probably before you were born. I mean, that was back when uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was Lou Alcindor in the Lakers yeah. and all that. Yeah, that was, you know, I, I there was a period of time when, when I watched all that, but not anymore. No. Nope. Yeah, I mean, I, I've heard they've had some uh, football teams down in Texas that are decent, but all right. Um, around in the Lubbock area, but we'll, we won't mention them. But um, if, if you had to pick a favorite music genre, what, what's your favorite music genre? Oh, gosh. Pro you know, probably a little bit of everything except country Western. <laughs> you know, nice. I, for some reason I can't. But um, 
I think mostly it, it's right now it's either uh, music when I lift, um, which is quite different from other times, which would just be classical music. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. And then um, who is your favorite rapper? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have one of those. No, I I don't know. Um, Can well, you name any rappers? Boozy, bo um, what's her boozy? Boozy badass. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna put that on all your reels. <laughs> we're gonna put that on all your reels. I have a question, actually. So I was trained um, classically in piano and violin. So who's your favorite classical music composer? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know. Um, Bach, uh, Vivaldi, uh, probably like Mozart. Uh, you know, just the just the classic stuff. Um, yeah, just background music really for me. But um, let's see. Gotcha. Yeah. And when you're lifting, you you're listening to classic or no? You listen to no. Yeah, no, I I listen to. Um, uh, probably turbo um the music station serious music station and then i have a playlist um oh and, is, it, is it on spotify yep you got to share it on your no no, no i mean it's not oh well i wouldn't know how to do that i mean i have a playlist but it's not a public playlist okay but there's gotcha. there's there's a lot of um parkway drive in there uh that i'm listening to lately so all right, I'm gonna check out who these people are. All right, um, bottom what is, feeder. What's that? The bottom feeder is my is my is my song at the time for deadlifts. Yeah, I'm writing this down. Okay. All right. Check it out. Um, what is your favorite movie genre? Probably documentaries right now. Yeah. Oh, which ones have you? I love documentaries as well. Which ones are you watching? Uh I would say the most recent ones that I've watched, uh, something about an octopus, the octopus teacher. Oh, wow. And uh, there's another one, animals, uh, naturally. Um, let's see, uh, something about stray dogs in Istanbul. There's a called Stray. That's a real good one. And cool. then, of course, the Beatles. There was a, a Beatles documentary, which was very long in five parts, but it was really good. So were you a fan of the Beatles? Back in the day, yeah. Was it like everyone was Beatles crazy when they absolutely first came out, right? yep. And you're one of them? I yeah. That's my awesome. my favorite album, uh Revolver. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. You remember that one? Yeah, but I, like yeah it. I can I can remember I can remember when um uh, uh Actually, my mother was the one that turned me on to the Beatles. We were we were in the car and um, the radio was on and I Want to Hold Your Hand came on. It was like one of their first ones. And she asked me, did you know about them? And that's how I learned about it. How old do you think you were at that time? Oh, um, I don't know. 15 16 years old okay so maybe you, 14 14 15 that's yeah. probably the age where parents are starting to learn uh, uh music trends from their kids and stuff so that's probably why yeah that's that's cool yeah we drunk right. we jumped from them to the doors and Jimi hendrix i don't know how that happened but <laughs> that's what you like okay right well down. back in the yeah <laughs> growing up that's awesome. We, I think everybody universally likes the Beatles, the Doors, and Jimi Hendrix. So, <laughs> all right. All right. Well, Shelly, that's going to be it for the Power of Teen America podcast. Unless, Julia, you have any more questions or, or um, Shelly, is there anything else that you want to say? Oh, no. I just I just really appreciate you guys. You you know, you, you, do, um, you do promote us master's lifters, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful thing. You do, and uh, King of the Lifts, and um volt network and bar bend they yeah. you know just really do a fantastic job yeah you're i mean and you're part of the reason why um like last year i remember um your your uh videos that we made just absolutely blew up and i remember king of the lifts posted them 
And yeah. They got like over half a million views and stuff yeah. like this. And so I remember you DM'd me and you said like something like, see, people do care about masters. <laughs> Look at <laughs> the views. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's good. Yeah. It's a good thing. Yeah. Thank so, you. all right. Well, we really appreciate you coming and uh, giving us your time and answering all of our questions and stuff like that. Um, looking forward to seeing you in just a couple weeks now in yeah. Scottsdale. We're like two weeks out, less than two weeks out. Yep. Um, so really exciting. And um, we'll be rooting for you. And uh, with that, um, Julia, thank you for coming as well, as always, and, uh, and asking the questions and everything like that. And um, with that, thank you to everyone who's tuning in to Power of Teen America podcast. And we'll let you go. Thanks again for uh, coming, Shelly and Julia, and catch you all next time. Peace all right, out. Thank you. Bye. Bye.